Lately there were many discussions about the PIPS DSP beacons. Uh, I have to say that I work for PIPS company in their pro team as a mountain guide and that I do know them for many years. I believe that they make really top products, that their inventions, workshops and know-how saved many, many lives in the backcountry. But on the other hand, I'm also the I go into the backcountry, I ski, I'm a mountaineer and when it comes to the safety gear it has to be 100% for sure. And if you have any doubts, please just send it back to Pips. So with the DSP beacons the biggest issue was the switch. So please just check your switch if there's any malfunction, if it slides back and forth. If your button is cracked, just send it back to Pips. This, for example, is the really severely damaged beacon and this one doesn't have an issue. Also, the other one that I have doesn't have an issue, but if you're in doubt, just send it back. Yeah, so to start from the, from the beginning, when you buy a beacon, register it. That's how you're gonna extend the warranty. And uh, with the PIPS beacons, you can connect them with your phone. On your phone, you can set the wanted functions. Uh, you can track the updates that are available. With that, you can use it uh, for training. But then the next thing is to put in the batteries. Uh, the basic batteries that we use are the normal alkaline batteries. Uh, if you want to use lithium, you have to set that up in your beacon because otherwise uh, they're not uh, compatible. Never use the ones that they're made to charge. And uh, then when you're not using the beacon for extended periods or through the summertime, always put the batteries out. When you pack your beacon, make sure that it's wrapped in clothes in the middle of your case. In the middle of the pack, or you just put it on the body at home before the tour. There are two ways that we can uh, wear our beacon. One is uh, firmly on your body, or you have an uh, apparel pocket that, it, that is designated uh, to carry a beacon there. So first, let's see how we have it in the chest harness. This way, it's firmly here on the body. For sure, this one, it's not possible to mess it around. But let's look here at Matei. So Matei has a bit different carrying system. Like why do you have to carry the beacon with the display towards the body, like this. First, the screen is going to be protected because it's not exposed on the outside. All the switches are also pointed towards the body and I like it to have here on the side. We're going to see that later because of interference and all the other stuff. So the benefit of having a beacon here in the chest harness is it first it doesn't get, uh, it's not so exposed to be mechanically damaged. Uh, the second one, it stays uh, warmer, so it's better for the lifetime of the battery. And uh, also, one of the biggest benefits is that it's located closer to the head. So, during the rescue, if somebody's gonna be probing you, he's gonna, before he probes, he's gonna pinpoint your location closer to the head and that uh, shortens the time of the digging out the person or cleaning the airways, which is uh, critical. So let's see on Luca how he has his beacon on. So this is approved apparel pocket. It's sewn inside into the trousers, so there's no snag points in case of av avalanche that he can rip it off. So always when you're gonna put it out, just make sure you put it this leash around the wrist. So yeah, the biggest downside is gonna be that you're gonna pinpoint your location 
down here and it's really far away from the head so that means that you're gonna start to probe somewhere around here and also you're gonna start to dig lower down so yeah here the biggest benefit is that you get it out uh, faster than when it's in the chest uh, chest harness here but then uh, when you have it in this um, in this pocket in the in the trousers it's more exposed to mechanical damage in case uh, you get avalanche over the rocks uh, hitting a tree or a chunk of ice it's way more exposed it's more exposed to the cold and it's not that firmly there in position so yeah let's see also how it interferes with the other devices beacon is sensitive to other electronic devices to metal objects and to magnets so therefore we need to keep it at least 20 centimeters away when it's in sand mode and at least half a meter away when you we're in search mode so when you're in sand mode you're gonna be on the tour you're gonna be skinning up you're gonna be skiing down and if you get caught in an avalanche in severe cases you know when an avalanche folds you together when you're smashed with the brutal force you know they can come together and it can come to interference so yeah let's be honest we all have a phone with us the whole time we like to take pictures and we like to keep it handy so uh, especially for for us who are using more more electronic devices like uh, for example, when you're guiding a heli skiing, you're going to have a radio, you have a iridium communication device, you have your snow study kit, uh, metal probe, all the other stuff. And yeah, like the iridium communication device and the radio, we're always going to keep it somewhere on the body. So my personal rule is first, to have a beacon firmly in one place so that it doesn't move around and the second one to have my electronic devices on the other side at least 20 centimeters away and also that they're firmly in position so if you have a beacon here keep your devices on this side and even in this case like if you're gonna have a beacon here and a phone there you know in severe case it can come to interference so we have one feature that I really like is smart antenna. So in case that it comes to interference with uh, other electronic devices or with metal objects, your beacon is going to start to transmit with the other antenna that's further away from that object and that increases your survival chances. So this is the right body position. You have your arm extended, the beacon is pointed towards the search area. So this is how we increase our chances to get the signal because this is the best coupling position with the buried beacon and also with the extended arm we create a separation from the objects that can cause interference. So let's see what happens if we don't have an arm in the right position. So in this case we can be really close to the other electronic devices and straight away you're gonna see the numbers coming up even for 50% or even more. And it's not just from the phone, let's say, like in the case we are, we have a multiple barrier and we take a probe in the same hand as a beacon, you're gonna have again 50% less of a range. So let's make sure that you have your arm extended and your beacon pointed towards your search area that's how you're gonna increase survival chances. If you're buying a beacon, look for a bulletproof construction. Make sure that it has a circular receiving range, that it has a bulletproof mark function, and that it's all wrapped into a really nice compact package. Yeah. yeah, so now we are far away from the completing the rescue, but you you are aware how important it is to to have the knowledge. That's the fourth element besides the beacon, shovel and the probe. 
The optimal number of the people is three to four to travel efficiently through the terrain and also to perform to perform the rescue. Uh, now we need to do a basic medical check, uh, everything what's needed, uh, and to also secure the victim from the elements. In any case, we need to call 112 because of the further complications, because of the potential lost gear, night coming in, and he can also have uh, later on some medical complications that we're not aware. So yeah, in any case, you need to call for help. Uh, you're really welcome to subscribe to our channel, to write down any questions that you have. We are always happy to have a debate open on a topic like this. Uh, and you're really welcome to come to one of our workshops to get the knowledge or to just dust the rust off. And uh, see you in the next episode when we'll try to figure it out how to choose our skis. See you.